Welcome to the Film Analysis, today with Rambo Last Blood by Adrian Grünberg. Quite the controversial motion picture. Many consider it a bloodthirsty, reactionary film, outdated even. The first four Rambo films had a similar reception. I disagree. However, Last Blood is a beautiful, tender, gentle film despite the explicit depictions of violence. Perhaps 2019's most tender film due to its stark contrast. We witness a character of intangible complexity, intangible without Rambo speaking much. He remains taciturn with his few statements hitting the nail on the head. For example, everything still seems the same to him. Nothing has ever changed in him. He only tries to suppress it but can't hold on forever. Finally, Rambo embarks on a cruel adventure in the fifth film. He returned to his father's ranch in the fourth film, now living there with the Mexican housekeeper Maria and his Mexican foster daughter Gabriel. But Gabriel longs for her real father. He disappeared back to Mexico first and he was violent. There is no reason to return to her father, but she will not be dissuaded. Gabriel secretly heads to Mexico and falls into the clutches of a human trafficking ring. Now the time has come for Rambo. He must free Gabriel. He enters the action one last time, leaving his homeland once more, however, this time for a purely private cause. The US police do not feel responsible for Mexico. Rambo runs off on his own. When Rambo sharpens the knife, some automatically express disgust and derision. This old man and his old sayings, even in the first film, many mocked Rambo. Those of the audience who sneer should ask themselves whether they don't resemble the first film's repressive society, rejecting this strange deadbeat from the Vietnam War. Rambo is an outcast. Do we want to participate in his exclusion? True, Rambo does not engage in discourse. He is silent most of the time, but he does act at some point. There is a beautiful sentence by the philosopher Sioran in his book The New Gods. It reads, Every deed is possible as a deed only because we have broken with paradise, whose memory, poisoning our hours, makes each of us a demoralized angel. Rambo is demoralized too. But he must fulfill his duty and he will kill again in a brutal way. These cartel members kidnap young women, drug and rape them repeatedly. Rambo's foster daughter falls into their clutches. What is he supposed to do? In no scene does Rambo even begin to enjoy killing. Rather, he conceives of it as duty. He also represents a cowboy as the very first scene in Last Blood illustrates. A natural disaster occurs in his homeland. There's a storm and Rambo rides on horseback and tries to save at least a few people. He doesn't quite succeed. Rambo is also not the evil old white man. He is not white at all, but of German and Indian descent. These details matter, creating a multi-layered overall picture. Admittedly, Rambo commits vigilante justice here. He doesn't deny that at all. But we have become accustomed to not seeing violence and looking the other way. 
Moreover, our society outsources violence or at least renders it bearable by technical means. Just think of drone killings. Those responsible keep a low profile and press buttons. Rambo, on the other hand, still fights man against man. If we can bear this violence, however, we shouldn't stand this other structural violence in the first place. We don't have to approve of the violence in Rambo films, but at least it is honest. Some have accused Last Blood of promoting Trump's wall against Mexico. The film supposedly favoring restraining policy. And that's not true. Mexico may be the hostile country here in terms of human traffickers, but Rambo is not hostile to the people of Mexico. He lives in a very intimate, almost maternal relationship with his Mexican housekeeper. His foster daughter has Mexican roots. This is Rambo's family, whom he could never have and has now chosen for himself. When he meets members of the unsavory human trafficking cartel in Mexico, they beat and kick Rambo to the ground he can't get up. A Mexican journalist helps him to his feet and nurses him until he moves on again. Moreover, the film does not only feature passive women on one side and active men on the other, as some suggest. The journalist not only mends Rambo's injuries, but also advises him and does research to track down the cartel. Now one might object we are dealing with a strong old man helping young, weak women. But more accurately, Rambo risks his life to take down the worst misogynists. Certainly, Rambo is still one of the old breeds, sometimes preserving an old role model. At the same time, he doesn't belong to today's alphas being taught how to dominate women by self-important coaches. No film features Rambo articulating what a man should be. He simply lets his actions speak for themselves. These alpha males, on the other hand, don't dispose Rambo's self-evidence and strength. They direct their weakness in the form of prepotent strength against women. One thing is certain. If Rambo were to meet these alphas, he would punch them right in the face, as happened in Last Blood. Rambo fights these prepotent men, waving their knives, pressuring women and driving them into prostitution. Rambo sides with women. All Rambo films are about the exceptional, not the usual. In this situation, Prosemina discussions no longer helps, only naked violence. If someone like Rambo no longer exists, this type of man who is going to risk everything to save the day. The cartel members resemble terrorists, both cannot be included in a democratic discussion. When the other differs so radically, talks and negotiations are no longer possible. Whether traffickers or terrorists, one doesn't sit down at a round table and find common ground. Rambo, as many cinema heroes before him, think of John Wayne for example, steps into a legal abyss. An outlaw fighting outlaws a sinister affair as the Iraq war demonstrated. States break people and human rights to defend the very same. Rambo was trained in Vietnam to be a guerrilla against the guerrillas. There's quite the risk of reenacting the enemy becoming what you used to fight. 
we have seen this time and again in foreign policy in recent years. All this weighs heavily on Rambo's severally scarred shoulders. He has never left the war or the war has never left him. Last Blood therefore ends on a sad note. Peace prevails after all, but on a battlefield where no grass will grow for a long time. We do not see here, unlike in many Westerns, a glorious American story. Rather, Sylvester Stallone lends his unmistakably expressive face to a painful swan song. The film is a swan song for the West. All the pseudo-morally legitimized interventions after 1945 have not actually made the world a better place. No, Stallone was never the simple, clumsy action hero who straightened everything out with a punch. As the great melancholic of action cinema, he always brought his physiognomy to his minimalist acting. He certainly belongs to the most underrated Hollywood actors. Many reduced him to his Rambo figure without understanding the character. In Last Blood, Sylvester Stallone shows not only how agile and powerful he still is, but also his sensitive acting, his wonderfully expressed despair. In the end, an incomprehensible loneliness prevails. Last Blood is loud and brutal, but at the same time very quiet. In spite of all the explicitness, so much remains unspoken. Rambo is seething, but much cannot be said or shown. It can only be guessed at. Read in Sylvester Stallone's face. This explicit violence encircles something increasingly immeasurably. Once the heart has been ripped out of the evil, peace shall finally return, but doesn't. Rambo is looking for something substantial to grasp this evil, and yet somehow one wants to give, him, to give meaning to all this senselessness. But it will not succeed this time either. In cinema, we have become accustomed to the worst conflicts resolving themselves into harmony at the end. We like to see an interlude towards the end. Three months later, everybody is sitting happily ever after under the Christmas tree, not in Last Blood. Not the brutality, but its ending renders the R-rated film an adult film in which we don't just watch, but see. It would be nice if you would like to support the film analysis financially. You can do so via my bank account or PayPal. Also, you can find me on Patreon. Thank you very much.